Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and as you probably know I'm the airline pilot. Today we're going to speak about the 5G and whether this wireless communication standard can put the threat to aviation around the world. Let's go! Bum, bum. The 5G has just been launched in the United States and many of the airlines cancelled their flights there because the frequency of the 5G is very close to radio altimeter frequency that we use on our airplanes. Let me tell you why do we need the radio altimeter on Boeing 737. It's the airplane that I fly. So basically, then you perform the automatic approach and landing. It's the crucial part of equipment. You need to have two radio altimeters working on the airplane. And at 1,500 feet radio altimeter, we have the system test. So basically, the they are two separate systems and they check each other and you need to have two of the autopilots on for this kind of approach on Boeing 737. For bigger planes like 777, you have just one autopilot button, but actually have three autopilots there. On 737, we have two. At 500 feet, we should check the flare on our flight mode annunciator on primary flight display. And that means that airplane is getting ready to prepare for auto land and actually to flare the airplane. At 400 feet round, uh, the airplane trims nose up but continues to maintain the glide profile. At 500 feet, the flare starts to be active and the airplane releases the force of the glide that it maintained. And since it's trimmed up, it starts to flare with the help of the stabilizer, let's say. And at 27 feet, we have the retard. At this stage, the throttles retard to idle and airplane lands. The Boeing 737 is certified for category 3 Alpha approach in our airline. There are some of the modifications that Boeing can land to category 3 Bravo, but they're very rare and you have to pay quite a lot of money for that configuration. So usually it's category 3 Alpha, so the visibility should not be less than 200 meters and the cloud base or array, a radio altitude, where you can spot the lights of the runway is 50 feet. So down to this altitude you go and you have to have the visual contact and you have to have the RVR not less than 200 meters. With this 5G system now it can interfere with the frequency of the radio altimeter and just imagine flying till 50 feet and altimeter will tell you like retard at 400 and flare at 500 let's say because it perceives the different type of the signal, so that is why it can be unsafe, my friends. Bum, bum. The radio altimeter is also the part of ground proximity warning system, so we may have false warnings with that system as well, plus you may have some wrong configuration clouds with landing gear and flaps, and your TOGA takeoff go around button may not work since it's armed then you are below 2000 feet. Very interesting. That is why we have now the built-in for Boeing 737 and G and let me show it to you. All right, guys, so here is the flight crew operations manual bulletin issued by the Boeing itself and you may find the similar for Airbus or any kind of other airplane type. The background information, the FAA has issued Airworthiness Directive regarding potential interference from 5G. Uh, so here we have interference with radio altimeters, as I said to you, it can interfere or may interfere they expect it to interfere. The FAA will issue no time, so there are specific, specific airports in the United States with those no times uh, with having 5G operations nearby, to which you have to be, if you fly there, take off from those airports or fly there, you need to be prepared according to this uh, bulletin. The Federal Aviation Administration identifies several types of operations that are prohibited. You can clearly see it's prohibited if you have no time for 5G for a particular airport. So everything of these uh, prohibited for a particular airport with no time. Instrument landing system, including even category one, interesting. Required navigation performance uh, with authorization required. A error. 
automatic landing operations of course as i told you manual flight control guided system operations uh, so head up displays that sometimes used on boeing 737s uh, we don't have those in my airline use of enhanced flight vision system i don't know what airplanes equip the, with this kind of systems uh, for sure it's not about the 737 ng that we have and here's the most interesting part is for me so 5g interference on potential effects on airplane systems so autopilot flight director system as you can see it's impaired so autopilot may not engage in auto land autopilot disengagement may occur during ILS GLS approaches flare more mode uh, runway alignment may not be available flight director and HUD may retract flight director guidance system may be earnest enough enough may not engage take off go around mode may not be available <laughs> well uh, auto throttle system also impaired auto throttle may not be available auto throttle may remain in MCP speed uh, it can actually retard it was happened that is what happened to Turkish Airlines in uh, uh, Netherlands remember yeah the skip all uh, catastrophic accident then uh, they had some problems with the radio altimeter and then uh, airplane identified that it is a 27 feet array and retired the thrust levers to idle so they lost the speed speed that crashed the airplane so basically it is the threat right now if you have altimeter uh, wrong operation so you have you may have the summer result I would say so you need to take care so the flight control system also have some oh my god lots of lots of things my friends happening here with a with erroneous radio altimeter uh, indication and this is what boeing asked us to do for an airport with 5g c band no tom uh, so if you fly there to those airports with no tams or you take off or land there you need to follow the specific instructions given by boeing so prior to off, verify normal radio altimeter indication climb out toga mode may not be available monitor pitch mode engagement monitor roll mode engagement autopilot may not engage for the send for for every type of operation we have specific instructions from Boeing so in general this is very interesting information is for me to read but I do not fly to United States uh, airports on Boeing 737 we don't have those flights so for me it's just uh, interesting to read all of this stuff um, in future maybe we'll fly there someday on Boeing 737 who knows and I'm sure that FAA and those wireless companies they will figure out how to get away from this type of the very restrictive operations of uh, this 5G C band no time so pr probably not probably but for sure it will not stay like this it will change bum, bum. Because of that 5G issue, more than 80 airports in the United States were restricted to category 1 minima and you can perform the automatic approach and landing there with that NOTAM active. However, now we have some good news and let's go to FAA website to check them out. So if you go to Federal Aviation Administration official website, you may find the information about 5G and aviation safety. This is a very interesting article. They constantly update it. And here we have the latest statements on the bottom here. So recently they cleared 78% of United States commercial fleet to perform low visibility landings at airports where wireless companies deployed 5G C bands. So they cleared these particular airplanes, all the Boeings, all the Airbuses and Embraers 170-190 regional jets to fly in those airport airports even to perform low visibility landing. So it is a good step forward and I think in the future, in nearby future, we'll have these buffer areas around the airfields for 5G that will limit it a little bit and we'll have those knot arms lifted up and of course bulletin removed. Pum, pum. What we have so far, my friends, is that FAA is working together with those wireless companies that introduced 5G to solve these uh, potential problems for commercial aviation industry. Now they are thinking to change the coverage area of those 5G antennas to have two mile buffer zone 
of the airport areas and for approach as well. However, some of the telecommunication wireless companies state that the 5G frequency cannot interfere with the radio altimeter frequencies and there are some of the areas in the world that 5G was introduced uh, before and there was no disrupt in air traffic. So they could be right, why not? But if they are wrong, the price for that goes to catastrophic outcomes. And I'm really happy that FAA is going to this topic and I'm sure that they will find the safe way out from this 5G situation. I see it now improves. Well, my friends, I hope you like this video. And as usual, follow the awesome guy checklist. First, what you need to do is just to like this video. After that, subscribe to my channel and finally ring the bell, whatever it means. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great time. Pam, pam.